Well, the dream used to be Freedom 55, but it's feeling more and more out of reach. Now, that slogan was used in the 80s as an aspirational goal for retirement age. The cost of living crisis coupled with people living longer has more Canadians willing and able to work for longer. A new study finds more Canadians would delay retirement if they could have less stress and fewer hours of work. The average Canadian is expected to live until the age of 83. Compare that to 50 years ago, when the life expectancy in this country was just 73 years old. And that shift has also seen a shift in attitudes towards work. A survey of Canadians who had not completely retired showed 55% would be willing to continue working if it could be part-time. 49% would want fewer hours as long as it doesn't affect their pension. And 37% say they would stay in the workforce for more interesting work. According to the survey, people who retired primarily for financial reasons tended to do so at an older age. But there is a cohort of Canadians who are fully or partially retired at a younger age. 21.8% of those surveyed retired between the age of 54 and 59, while nearly 45% retired between the age of 60 and 64. Those people, clearly not part of the new trend of Canadians willing to delay retirement. But it's possible those numbers will change if employers try and fill labour gaps with people who are willing to stay in the workforce longer. So we're going to start with your take on Twitter. We ask you the question that we ask our debaters every day. Would you delay retirement if you could work less? 58.5% of you said yes, you would. 41.5% of you say no, you wouldn't. So let's bring in both Kate and Lindsay. Uh, I wanted to ask you first, Kate, not only would you do it, but you have done it. So why are you a proponent of doing this? Yeah, you know what, when you sent me that question, I said, oh yeah, I would do it, and I have done it. I left a career in media that was crazy hours, as you know, uh, 15 years in that, and I was just searching that work-life balance that I don't think people really knew existed or could exist until, believe it or not, COVID. And then when COVID came up, we learned as a huge society that you could work from home or work remotely. You could implement flexible work hours. And that's something that I brought into my life through creating my own business, KC Media, six years ago. And so now I think there are a whole lot of recruiters and businesses that are having to adapt to this change and look at offering flexible work hours, remote working environments, in order to not only recruit new employees, but to keep employees right now. And it's a trend mm -hmm. that is not going to stop anytime soon. And I'm well aware that I'm going to still be working into my 50s and probably 60s, but I love what I do and I do it on my own terms and I, I'm very happy with it all. But Lindsay, you say no way for you. <laughs> Absolutely not. And I think I'm in the position myself as with a lot of other people who are in my demographic as a millennial where we're already looking at our retirement thinking, how the heck are we gonna make it to retiring even at 65? You know, We might be working until we're 70. However, I'm very lucky to currently be employed uh, where I have something called EDO, which is earned day off. And I think that that actually might be a better solution where I could see myself still retiring maybe at 55 or 60 and I work more during the week. So I get three days weekends that reduces my stress mm. immensely. And I know the Algonquin Highlands uh, with the municipalities have already started doing these four day work weeks. And I absolutely love my four day work weeks when I have them. And I wish that more places did that. Yeah, and it's interesting because let's take a look at these stats once again when you consider the trade-off that people would be willing to make in order to have uh, that sort of delayed retirement. 55% say they would work part-time, so reduced hours. They want fewer hours as well. That's 49% of people without affecting their pension. That's a key indicator as well. And 37% want more interesting work. Now, it's interesting, though, because, Kate, when you consider that, you know, a lot of us were brought up with that sort of aspirational goal of 
of you know golfing in your golden years and sort of making sure that by 55 or 60 you are retired what is the other you know side of that coin is it because that we are all feeling hey we're fit why wouldn't we keep working as we get older well, I mean, my take on it is why don't I go out and do some golfing now while I'm 40 and still be able to enjoy parts of my life before I'm in my 60s or 70s. So if that means that I have to continue working, whether it's part time or cut back hours in order for me to enjoy that lifestyle I want to enjoy now while my kids are still young, while I can do it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I think that's a huge draw for people, especially in my age group who are saying, why am I working these crazy long hours and not being able to enjoy? And you know what? I do agree, though, that the four-day work week is so key. It would mm -hmm. greatly reduce the stress levels, let people enjoy the life that they have at the age where they are working full-time. So I completely agree with that one. Lindsay, to that end, though, you know, are you sort of understanding at the same time that you may have to work if you're working four day work weeks or, or you know, possibly longer days to get that third week, uh, third day off? You know, is the understanding that, look, I'm going to have to, you know, stop at some point if I want to have those golden years down the road? Yeah, I completely agree that at some point it's going to have to stop and I'm going to have to, you know, have my time to finally uh, retire and everything. But I look at it this way. I'm always going to be in my golden years and I'm always going to be living in the now. And if I don't have the opportunity to enjoy myself while I'm 32 at the moment, um, I, I'm not doing what's best for me, for my lifestyle and for stress in life. And you know what, when I retire, I'll do even more golf, but for now, I'll do it on my three-day weekends. Kate, it's interesting because, you know, I'm of that generation where you basically were told and brought up to believe that you have to do the work, the nine to five, make sure that you save up enough and then you can hit 55 or 65 and then retire. Do you think the mentality really has changed so that people are, you know, either taking a gap year at university or saying, I'm going to take care of myself now and then sort of let everything else sort itself out later on? I mean, you know, hey, I came up with that, too. I was brought up like that. My mom's a retired teacher. She was retired, I believe, even earlier than 55. And so I think it's just it's a change in perspective. And like I said, I really think there's a lot of people that saw that change during COVID when they were able to have those flexible work hours because they had no choice. Companies had no choice. If they wanted to keep their employees, they had to say, sure, OK, if you need to work evenings because you're also teaching your kids during the day, then go ahead, do what you have to do. We'll set up the remote, you know, workstations for you. When I started seeing some of my friends in the media anchoring the news from their home, I, it nearly blew my mind. Mm. I thought I'd never see that before. And look at us here. Look, both of us guests, you know, reporting live guests from all over the country. So, I mean, it just goes <laughs> to show that things can change and they can change quickly. And I mean, I don't want to work well into my 60s, but I figure, hey, you know what? If it means that I can do what I want to do now, it just means I got to hustle a little harder in the next couple of years to hopefully make it before the 60 mark. But guaranteed, I'll still be working at 55 because I want to be. Yeah. So I'll, I'll end with this for both of you and Lindsay, you first, you know, what do you see if you have that type of a plan? What do you see as a target age for you to actually retire and stop working? I would love to see myself retired by the time I'm 60. Um, I would love to say 55. I know that realistically with the way that the world is going and we're seeing so many different changes when it comes to interest rates and things like that might have to work a little bit longer, but I'm going to enjoy every second of what I have now with when I do have my three-day weekends and everything, and I'm going to live to the best of my ability at the moment, and when I get to retirement, I'll enjoy that too. <laughs> Kate, what do you think? I mean, do you have a, a goal or a target age where you want to say, okay, that's it, we're done here with work? Come on, Mike. Yeah, tomorrow. Who doesn't want to just retire? <laughs> but that's not the reality. I mean, no, I don't, because I honestly think I'm still quite young. I've got a lot of years to make some good money, invest it well. Um, but I have two young kids. They've got to go to university. Interest rates are insane right mm. now. I mean, we're all kind of struggling. So like I said, I in a perfect world, by the time I'm 60, if I can be retired or working very, very little, I would be extremely happy. So don't hold me to it, though. 
Yeah, I think that's the goal for everyone. And maybe that's why we all still play the lottery a little bit, don't we? Okay, oh, we're yeah. going to leave it right there for right now. But don't forget, you can continue this debate on our Twitter page, at CTV, the debate.